हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज जिमी सिंह ब्रोकर ओनर ऑफ सुपर मैक्स रियल्टी सिक्स फोर सेवन नाइन सिक्स वन टू सिक्स थ्री नाइन और यू कैन विजिट एट माई वेबसाइट ट्रिपल डब्ल्यू डॉट सुपर मैक्स रियल्टी डॉट सी ए सो फ्रेंड्स इन टूडेज वीडियो आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस हाउ टू फाइनेंस रेंटल प्रॉपर्टीज और इफ यू आर अ इन्वेस्टर हु हिट अ रोड ब्लॉक एंड कांट सीम टू गेट अ हेड of buy, acquire more rental properties give supermax team a call and in this video i like to discuss uh, you know some creative solutions how lenders these days in covid environment are looking uh, you know uh, to qualify investors so they can move forward so first thing is guys these days if you already have bunch of properties looking to buy more some lenders they are now look asking you uh, your bank statement showing that you have 3 months reserve fund for each property so let's say you know you have five rental properties and uh, let's say uh, first property has a mortgage and principal uh, or interest of payment of 2000 so they want to see 6000 for one property plus you know other five properties they multiply and see that kind of reserve fund is there so they are getting tighter but uh, the good part is there still some solution which i will discuss so first thing uh, you know what happen is if you are first time buyer and at the same time you want to buy investment property so here is my option for you so if you are buying a duplex you can actually buy 5% down on insured mortgages so you can actually live in the basement uh, for whatever rent you are paying at the same time and then upstairs you can rent maybe for 12 to 1500 dollars 2000 dollars and that whole rental amount Uh, is added to qualify you for more property uh, so up to 4 units maybe triplex four plus uh, owner occupied you can buy today 10% down so if you live anywhere in gta golden horseshoe london and uh, you know are not working with the agent uh, give our team a call supermax realty and then what happen is if you are buying four plex same thing you live in one unit three other units income is added to your own income to qualify for more property so typically what lenders do is they examine two things to qualify for your rental property first thing is they check what we call dscr that is called debt servicing coverage ratio second thing is uh, you know they were they check rental offset or add backs so what is the difference So first thing I'm going to talk about debt servicing coverage ratio. Uh, the basic formula basically uh, is net operating income divided by debt service, which is principal and interest. So I'll give you very realistic example. So let's say your property is generating two thousand dollars a month in income, and your mortgage, which is principal interest, is twelve hundred dollars, and the expense to manage the property, which can be taxes, repairs, insurance. vacancy rate let's say is $500 so you know debt coverage uh, ratio formula basically says you divide net operating income how much revenue is coming minus the expense divided by principal interest so in this example 2000 minus 500 which is expense divided by 1200 is 1.25 that is actually the ratio they are looking for so what that uh, means is the property generates $1.25 for $1 that is owed in principal interest and they are very happy with that so mostly lenders want minimum 1.1% coverage ratio for safety cushion so that is something you have to keep in mind you know what how lenders are looking at it and second thing they will check is rental offset or add back so what are those so let's say if you have a rental property you know it's generating certain cash flow so if you go to your own bank let's say top big banks they just take 50% of the rental amount rest of that you have to qualify with your income right so they might deny you that you can't qualify so what b lenders do b lenders can be credit unions or certain other lenders monoline lenders which are only available via good uh, mortgage brokers they actually take 85 uh, 80% So even sometime hundred percent of the rental amount, so you can qualify for more property. So keep that in mind, uh, you know about the add backs. That makes a huge difference of you getting a yes and no for the next property. And uh, 
you know these days some lenders they don't like airbnb short term rental you know if you don't have a lease together they like to see a lease so if you have a student rental you put like six people on it on monthly basis they don't like it so what uh, you can do is creatively is set up a corporation and pay yourself t4 t5 every year so lender can at least take a income of two year average uh, for that uh, property and uh, other thing you know uh, i recommend my client these days is you know get your paperwork ready you know at least 3 months reserve fund for each property you have to have a full lease and bank statement showing where the money is being transferred by your tenant because they want to see a arm length transaction they don't want to see that you renting a property your cousin or like your brother or sister they want to see as a stranger you are renting your property to right so other thing they might ask you if you can't qualify on your own they will ask you for a co-signer or a grantor so what is the difference the difference friends in co-signer that person co-signer is responsible for your payments and goes on the title versus a grantor you know he also does the same thing he's responsible for the payments in case you are in default but he doesn't go on the title and has no claim on that so just keep in mind typically you see co-signers as a family like spouses or father sign for kids so let's say you know somebody has a less income so other person bridge that gap of extra income and he is uh, also signing mortgage documents just like anybody else the co-signer and if you want to get rid of the co-signer name from the property you have to go to the lawyer and there's a legal fee involved and you might need approval from the lender as well so in case of grantors who doesn't go on the property bank still want to see his financial strength of the grantor he has to still you know have a disclosure statement with asset liabilities and everything and uh, in this situation what happen is buyer has the income he might be self employed has a good income or somebody else but his credit is blemished or not good or maybe too new of a credit so in that situation we need grantor so know these the difference that way you know you are ahead of the game and always get a independent third party legal advice not from the lawyer who's doing a deal or doing a transaction you should have your own unbiased opinion so you should know the risk involved in signing for somebody second creative solution uh, you can do is if you're buying a triplex fourplex and uh, seller has the property paid off uh, instead of him selling and getting a big tax bill for capital gain you can recommend him maybe take a small mortgage of vendor take back So let's say uh, you know if you have 10% down and your lender wants 20% minimum down payment you can ask the seller if he's willing to hold a 10% uh, mortgage at a nominal interest uh, that is something you know that is creative solution and third thing is basically uh, if you have a friend or family who has a property uh, and you don't have much money what you can do is uh, you know you can actually tap equity of that property or the lender can put a collateral mortgage and basically is kind of a blanket mortgage uh, that way the risk of lender is less and the mortgage is registered on the property as a second property so let's say you're buying a property and your parents or a family has a property which has equity so what the lender will do he's put a second property a uh, second mortgage or liens lien against your family property so you can pull out equity and use as a down payment towards your new product so there'll be two liens registered so if you are using a b lender there might be two uh, you know liens registered or two mortgages registered so it is a complex transaction and the lender fee might be higher so typically what happen is <clears throat> some people know the opportunity cost they know you know it's okay to pay that kind of fee so at least they can go and buy a property which is appreciating and in long run if they make 100000 in 5 years uh they might have to pay 2 to 4% uh lender broker fee in case of a private mortgage where the interest is basically 6 to 12% again it is not recommended for everybody but lot of people who are short term investors they borrow uh from hard lenders in this situation and the other cost might be appraisal fee of 4 to 500 dollars and uh as i said 2 to 4% lender and broker fee So in case of B lenders which can be credit union or monoline lenders their fee is 1% and then because brokers are compensated differently and then at the same time uh you know some brokers charge fee on top so those things you ask them and what happen is uh, uh 
mostly when you go to a lender you know they have some people who can come and see your property do appraisal so you know or they have they can do like electronic appraisal which we call emily model where they can have evaluation electronically so ask all these cost and uh, find all the creative solutions when you sit with your mortgage broker can i bring a co-signer to the table and uh, then or can i get a grantor on the table can the lender or the seller hold a second mortgage or can i put a collateral on my other property to finance the next property because i was working with the investor recently buying a commercial property so what happened is is one of the rental properties is paid off so the b lender put a lien on as a second mortgage registered on his uh, rental property so he can tap equity and put towards down payment on his uh, plaza or sometimes people buy pre construction condo so if you have a rental property paid off you can put a second mortgage pull up the equity uh, obviously you have to sit and see what is the cost involved what is the interest involved because sometimes it is easier to qualify for a line of credit uh, for parents to help the kids again guys in short video i can't discuss all the creative solutions or the financing uh, models which we use uh, for our clients to acquire the property so if you are in a market and uh, you don't know how to start or you go to your bank and the bank says no uh, one lender no doesn't mean it is no for everybody i have clients who have big portfolio i've been personally investing in real estate and we always find a way to get the do- job done so if you're looking to buy a investment property pre construction condo brand new house anywhere in greater toronto area golden horseshoe london kitchener waterloo give supermax team a call you can call me directly at 647-961-2639 or you can uh, visit my website www.supermaxrealty.ca thanks for watching god bless you